Hey guys, welcome to this video on how to use the draconic chart in astrology part two. I'm Cassandra the Saffron Sage, helping you use astrology to evolve. And we're talking about the draconic chart, how to use it. So the draconic chart, first of all, you guys, the word draconic means dragon-like. And the draconic chart is formed by changing your north node to the zero point of Aries. This means if your north node is near zero degrees of Aries, so if it's in the early degrees of Aries or the late degrees of Pisces, your draconic chart will be very similar, if not the same, as your natal chart. Don't feel bad if that's the case. That just means that your soul is the same as you. Your soul is more similar to who you are, if that makes sense, because the draconic chart is the chart of your soul. And so it's like our natal chart is a snapshot of, you know, what, what the planets were in the sky when we were born. It holds potentials and it always stands. Our natal chart is always our natal chart. Our moon in our natal is always our moon. Uh, I wanna talk about the draconic chart. So there's a couple ways to use this chart. One I talked about in another video where I go over how to transform your moon sign. If you haven't checked that out, feel free to check it out. In that video, I just talk about your moon and how to look at your draconic moon and how to find it in the chart and see it and know what it is and use it because so, you know, sometimes we just embody that energy naturally, and sometimes we can learn how to become more like that. We can use the qualities of our draconic sun and moon to understand ourselves, but also to really step in more to those energies, step in more to the themes, the activities, or the ways of being that those signs hold. So if you're not sure how to actually use that other video where I talk about transforming your moon sign, you can always just, whatever your draconic moon is, you can watch that moon sign video, learn more about that moon sign, and see ways that you can add in those qualities or those skills or those abilities of that moon sign and develop them to rise to your highest potential or to solve challenges you have. So for me, I have a Pisces moon. My draconic moon is in Aquarius. And so Aquarius is known to be slightly detached and aloof. And that really fits me really well, a lot more than a Pisces moon, to be honest. So instead of feeling bad that I'm slightly emotionally detached, by incorporating that draconic chart, I can see that that's part of my personality. It's part of my personality not to necessarily always be warm and fuzzy when I'm communicating. Now that doesn't mean I use that as an excuse not to try to be nice to people, but that it's a, just a tool for self-understanding and self-actualization because for me, that Pisces moon in the sixth house, I get stuck in my emotions. So that's one of the traps of that moon. Everyone's moon signs has good and a bad, positive, negative. Everyone has you know, a light side and a shadow side of every single placement they have. Some are more shadowy than others, I will say. And, you know, we can remedy those things. But uh, basically, that transformation of that moon sign for me, that really helped. So that's what I made that video for. But today we're talking about the second way to use the draconic chart, and that is to overlay it on top of the natal chart. If you're using astro.com, this is one of the options to, you can look at the draconic chart, or I think it's like draconic plus natal or natal plus draconic. You, you pull it up and it's, it's going to be your natal chart. And then the draconic chart will be on the outside of the wheel. And what you do here to find the significant points is you just look for conjunctions. So you look for a conjunction to your angles in your natal. So that would be your ascendant, descendant, IC or MC. And any planet there is going to be infused into your personality. That planet is going to probably show up. Themes of that planet will probably show up in your life. And again, this is just to kind of understand your soul better. It's not to replace your natal chart. So I'm going to use myself as an example. Again, I have a Virgo rising. In my draconic chart, the only kind of major conjunction is I have Mars conjunct the AC, my ascendant. This is very different than your average Virgo rising because Virgo is feminine. It's a receptive sign. 
and it's very organized and orderly it can be kind of proper and and I do have that right like people think I have my shit together it's great <laughs> but also having Mars there really infuses a lot of um a self-will, you know, being willful, being wanting my own way, wanting to always be busy, wanting to always take action. And so just having that one placement, it just gave me a little bit more information about who I am. And there's something too about the draconic chart that really makes it feel like on some level, our soul wanted to be this. On some level, you know, even if we took away the natal chart, the draconic chart is like, who we truly are and who we can work on coming back to and, and allowing it to be okay because that's a part of astrology is letting it be okay who we are and learning to work with the challenges and capitalize on the strengths. So what you do is you find any conjunctions, any planets in that overlay chart that are conjuncting your angles or other planets. So if you have a conjunction to your sun, moon, or rising in your draconic chart, that's going to be really, really significant. And it's worth it to read up on that aspect, research that aspect as if it was a natal aspect, but just think of it as sort of a, another layer of self-understanding. Use it to see those conjunctions and consider them to be like overlays for your soul that are infused into your personality or life themes that are infused into your life. So let me know, you guys, if you have questions on this. I love hearing from you. You can also book a private reading using the link below, and I will see you guys in the next video.